Okay, let's continue by looking at the relationship between the types of decisions and management hierarchy. I think this is very, very important. Good, let's look at this. When we talk about management hierarchy, we're talking about, let's look at this, don't mind my terrible way of uh, drawing this. Um, yes. So, we're looking at this. Now, let's assume that... Um, Perfect. Let's assume that this is management hierarchy and this is types of decisions. If you remember, we, we spoke about types of decisions just a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago. Now, let's break it like this and like this. Now, top management, middle management, and supervisory. Right? Good. Now, we look at, when we're talking about decision, uh, um, types of decision making, we spoke about three types. We spoke about institutional um, decision, we spoke about managerial uh, decisions, we spoke about technical decisions. Now, there's a relationship between management hierarchy and types of decisions. And it's very, very important that every executive should pay attention to this. Because when you make up, you don't when you don't really understand um, the role of everybody in the organization and the kind of decision making levels where they can play or, or, or contribute in a discussion, you get to always make up. So when you understand that top people, top management can play key important role in making institutional decisions. And we get examples of institutional decisions like when, 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 when your company or your business like will, will want to acquire a new business or merge with another business or expand to a new country. Those are important decisions that one person cannot make. You need to bring in top leaders from your business to make that decision. And these top leaders could be, for example, we said um, board of directors, your management team. Management team here I'm talking about, let's say, chief executive officer, chief marketing officer, chief finance officer, uh, um, chief operating officer. You bring them together uh, with, with a board of directors and you people make that important institutional decisions. Now, middle, middle managers, as far as management hierarchy is concerned, make a lot of managerial decisions and we spoke about managerial decisions coordinate the moving part of the day-to-day -day running of the business uh, uh, coordinate the various departments and activities then supervisory level are mostly technical managers let's say like um head of the technical of the department head of the marketing department head of the it department head of um, sales department head of logistics department these are people that make technical decisions in the field as far as operations is concerned. So there is a strong relationship between the types of decisions and managerial hierarchy. And everybody in the organization always make a decision at some point. And every good business leader should know the kind of decision that his or her staff can make at any time. So, what are the ex eight steps in making a decision yes the, the, there's a process that every business leader can go through or every institution can go through to make a decision um i always say that without a clear mechanism for making coming for managing communicating and confirming decision implementation it can be easy for every business to spin out of control now these steps in making a decision include, number one, define the problem. Don't just uh, make decisions. What is the problem that this decision you're about to make would like to solve? Let's say, for example, the problem could be poor sales. And maybe poor sales is as a result of bad marketing. And you may have to make a marketing decision and maybe... When you define that, you even know who in your organizational hierarchy 
can help you make that decision be better. And if it's a problem of marketing, you, you may need to work with the head of the marketing department who is a technical person. You may need to work with the chief marketing officer who is a top manager and you guys make that decision. Number two, gathering information and collecting data. This is where research comes in. We spoke about research a few minutes ago. This is where research comes in. Step number three, perception of the environment. You cannot make decisions without paying close attention to the environment. The decision maker must become aware and be sensitive to the decision making environment before any decision is possible. The next step is developing and weighing the options. Yes, in every decision you will always have many alternatives and this is the like the heart of decision making. When you are faced with many alternatives, you need to choose one possible or best alternative. And the next step is choosing the best possible option. You develop and weigh the various options in the next in the last step. Then the next step is you choose the best possible option with the available information that you have. Number the next step in making decision is identification of resources and constraints. Yes, don't just talk about decision making. Look at do we have the money to execute this decision? Do we have the equipment to execute this decision? Do we have the human resources, the staff, the skills to execute this decision? Do we have constraints? What are the challenges and how do we sort them out? The next step in decision making is plan and execute, of course. Don't just make a decision. Don't, don't, be, don't practice a lot of um, decision paralysis. No, plan and have a plan, have an execution strategy. And the last step is take follow-up action. Follow up to see the impact of that decision in the business, in that department, or as per the result or the expectations you had or the key performance indicators that you had in mind when making that particular decision. So what are the conditions for making a decision? Yes, there are, there are conditions in making a decision. And although decision making is essentially an individual process, yes, what do I mean? Don't misquote me. An individual process means that in majority of the decisions, it is always the senior executive in the room that makes the final say. Everybody gets to brainstorm and brainstorm, and he's the one who validates that uh, uh, um, final decision uh, uh, making. And the surrounding conditions can vary widely. What are, what are surrounding conditions? The people bringing in perspectives and ideas and, and new conditions and so on. Business decisions are made under three conditions. Follow this carefully. Business decisions are made under three conditions. Condition number one is you will always make a business decision under certainty. That's the first condition. Certainty. Now, what does this mean? This means that there are some decisions that you will always make on the, when you are certain of what will happen. You are, you, the, the available information that you have, you are so certain that this is the outcome of this decision. The second condition to making a decision is you are making a decision under risk. Yes, you're making this under risk. There's a lot of risks around that decision making, but you have to make that bold decision despite the risk that is available at that particular time. So there are many business decisions that you will make in the midst of a lot of risk, and you will still have to make that decision. Number three, decisions made under uncertainty. For example, like in the midst of COVID-19, Many business people made a lot of decisions under uncertainty. Like nobody knew how 2020 will end. Nobody knew how. 20, nobody knows how knew how 2021 will start. There's a lot of uncertainty in the business landscape. But you still have to make a decision. So these are the various uh, um, conditions that every business person will have to make a decision. You make decisions under certainty. That's the easiest decisions to make. The last two are not easy. Where you are making decisions under high risk and you are making decisions under uncertainty. Now, what are the importance of decision making in the business? 
decision making helps you to understand the difference between what is rationally the best choice and the decision that sim simply feels right. Yes. Now, these are two things that are very, very important to note in business. There are many business people that make decisions because it feels right, which is not good for business. It is good to make decisions because it is rationally, logically, the best choice for you to make. So decision, good decision making helps you understand the difference between what is rationally the best choice for the business and the decision that just makes you feel right. That's when the research comes in and available data converted to information is very important. A gut feeling can certainly be a key part of your decision making in business. That, that, that I just have the, you, know, you just feel like, uh, in my spirit, I feel like people get to use that a lot in business. It is good, but it should not be the only thing that drives a course of action. Make sure that you find and understand all the information you can that is carry out deep research carry out all the required research before you make the decision don't make a decision because you feel like it be, be, be logical uh, have good reasons dig deep use data to make decisions number two Decision making helps every business to save time and money. The more efficient a business is, the more money they are able to save, make, and also save the most important asset in human history, and that is time. Effective decision making saves the business time and money. Not the, the, the next good thing about it is that decisions helps employees get confident. Good decisions help employees to get more confident. What do I mean? An executive who can make great decisions always have confident employees. Why? Because good decision making show employees that as a leader, you can lead them down through the path of success and even through any difficult path because they trust your decision making and they trust your strength. The next thing is good decision making help employees develop a stronger sense of commitment. Employees should feel that the company's wide decisions are being made logically, reasonably, and with everyone's safety and security in mind. Like, if you're making decisions because of family ties, or tribe ties, or, 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 or connections, whatever, many employees would not be committed to the business because they know that you're not logical, you don't reason, and you don't take um, the safety and security of the staff in mind before you make any decision. The next good thing about good decision making is better reputation for a better brand. Yes, of course, when you create an image of yourself as a business leader that exudes a sense of confidence, knowledge and power, you will be creating a tremendous reputation or brand for the business. Look at global companies. Their leaders are very good at making good decisions and firm decisions. Therefore, to conclude this session, never assume or guess work to make decisions. Do proper research, go through the right decision-making processes or channels before you make your final decision. Thank you so much for following up this session and see you in the next video. God bless you.